And guys, well, so far in our venture into the world of Intel Z370, we've had a look at quite a few boards, but today we're going to be looking to ASRock for a detailed look at the new Z370 Extreme 4. Now, if you look back over the previous Intel generations, we've always had an affection here for this Extreme 4 because it tends to strike that great balance of features and performance. And you know, more often than not, it has been positioned at a lower price point, making it a good value for money option. Extreme 4 boasts a very tidy looking theme with an emphasis on being neutral. Right across this board, we have a decent selection of features, including dual USB 3 headers, as well as a USB 3.1 header. Now, the price of this board means that you can pick it up for 150 in the UK and then 180 in the US. And so that is very good pricing because, you know, the other boards that we've had a look at, uh, they offer the same type of features and yet they're costing up to 30% more. And so we could have an absolute bargain on our hands here today. So let's check it out. Okay, well, let's start with an unboxing of our Extreme 4. So this is the packaging that it arrives in. As you can see there, we've got a carry handle on the top. And this is the front here, all the included technologies. And uh, if we just flip the box over, you can see there we've got a bit of a diagram, bit of a teaser of the actual board, the tech spec there. And then all of the features, this is a rundown of all the included features. And we will be going over these in our video. And inside the box we get all of these accessories here. So first of all we have the quick installation guide. That is a bit thinner than you would get on a user manual. It just goes through the basic procedures for any help that you might need. Driver CD there with all the utilities and actually that does have the PDF of the user manual if you need that. Case badge. Oddly enough a postcard which as you can see uh, you can put your stamp on and uh, you know if you're away on holiday. Not sure why you'd want a motherboard themed postcard but whatever floats your boat. Four SATA cables. A high bandwidth SLI bridge as you can see there that is a fixed SLI bridge. Rear IO shield. And then last of all, we have the uh, the screws for mounting your M.2 drives. And then underneath, we have the board in the anti-static bag. Okay, so here is our Extreme 4. And you can tell straight away how sleek this board is. ASRock has used black and grey as the two main tones across the board. And while this does look very clean and tidy, one thing that I really liked about the previous Extreme 4s was the inclusion of gold caps. You now it really gave the board some character and distinction. And not wanting to miss out on the RGB trend, ASRock has given Extreme 4 some adjustable lighting, but it is quite simple and it doesn't detract from the understated design. Along with those RGB lights, we also have a single RGB header for use with lighting strips inside your case. And as we can expect, this board here conforms to the ATX form factor, so it will fit inside most mid towers. As we step in for a look at the finer details, we first of all have the CPU socket. So this board here uses socket 1151 version 2. This is specifically here for Intel's 8th generation of processors such as the 8700K. Now Kaby Lake is also socket 1151, but this will not work on this board. Extreme 4 uses a digi power configuration which utilizes a 10 phase power design and with that we get premium 60 amp power chokes, combo caps and dual stack MOSFETs. All of those are dotted around the socket and we also have the, the 12k black caps. And so those Nichicon 12k black caps have the operating lifespan of 12,000 hours at 105 Celsius. Covering the MOSFETs we have a twin heatsink design. Both of those are separated so they aren't joined with a heat pipe. And behind that top heatsink there we have the CPU power which is an 8 pin socket. Now for the fan headers we get a total of 5. One is for the CPU fan header and another is for use with a water pump. Next we have the memory which allows for dual channel DDR4, up to 64GB, up to 4333MHz frequency and XMP2 is available as well. Now the memory also benefits from Hyper DDR4 which is something quite similar to DDR4 Boost on the MSI boards. Basically the circuitry is isolated which assists with providing a strong signal between the CPU and the memory. Right next to the memory we have twin USB 3 headers and a single USB 3.1 header. I really 
have to commend ASRock for including this as you know, quite a few brands have cheaped out and even on more expensive boards they're only including USB free headers and so for ASRock to go the extra mile and include a triple config with USB free and 3.1 this is a huge thumbs up. And again, in the storage department, we are not left disappointed because the Extreme 4 includes eight SATA 36G ports, whereas the norm is to only include six on the boards that we've looked at so far. And then we also get the two M.2 slots, which are PCI Express Gen 3 X4, and neither of those are gonna be swamped by a graphics card because of their good placement. And you can see we have a simple and a discrete heatsink, which is sat behind those SATA ports, and that covers the Z370 chip. Now moving on to the PCI Express, we have a selection of different options available here and these include triple PCI Express 3.0 X16s and triple PCI Express 3.0 X1s. And the modes for each of those X16s are 16, 8 and 4. And so this board can accommodate more than one graphics card and it actually supports both Nvidia SLI and AMD Crossfire. However, if like most you are using a single graphics card, then the best one to use is that top one for the full 16 mode. The two uppermost X16s have been given that steel protection which will strengthen the slot and also prevent any signal interference. Shifting over to the audio which is right next to the PCI Express, we have ASRock's Purity Sound 4. So this package here is driven by Realtek's ALC 1220 codec and it comes with a whole host of features which help to provide a good audio solution. We have Nichicon fine gold caps, any 5532 headphone amp, a 120 decibel SNR DAC, separated left and right channels, gold plated connection there for the front panel and all of this is isolated with PCB shielding. And so all of the ingredients there for a good audio solution. Okay and finally we have the rear I.O. section of Extreme 4 and this gives us the following connectivity. Two spaces for an optional Wi-Fi antenna, PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, D-Sub with DVI-D and then the HDMI next to them, USB 3.1 Gen 2 type A and type C ports, gigabit LAN that is via the Intel i219 controller, with two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports below, and then all of the audio ports there with optical out. And so instead of USB 2, we have the USB 3.1, and this is you know, exactly what we wanted with other Z370 boards. It's great that ASRock has phased out the old tech and replaced it with those newer ports. The only thing that we would say is that after you know, using a USB keyboard and a USB mouse, we only have two or three extra Type A ports to be used, and so uh, we'd have liked to have seen one or two more USBs. So that is the Z370 Extreme 4 from ASRock. Now what should be pretty clear from this video is that this board does more than what we've seen from the likes of Gigabyte from ASUS and MSI and yet it sails on in with a price tag which is 30% lower. And so there is no shadow of a doubt that Extreme 4 is a no-brainer if you want to save some cash but still get access there to that strong feature set. And as we pointed out, ASRock actually goes a little bit further than the boards, which are priced at around £200, $200, by offering USB 3, 3.1 headers, more SATA ports, and ditching USB 2. And so features are one thing, but what about the performance? Well, Extreme 4 tackled all of our tests very well, and even in some cases managed to give us that extra benefit in some of the benchmarks. And we did manage to hit that 5 GHz with our 8700K. The only criticism is that we needed more juice and had to apply 1.42 volts to the CPU core, which ultimately nudged up those temperatures. So guys, for the full review on this board here, please click on the link on the screen and in the description. Over there we've got all the benchmarks and a quick look at the BIOS for this board. Thanks very much for taking time out of your day to watch, guys. Be sure to share this video and also hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time.